one of the number one questions that we get when people are transitioning from training for a Salesforce certification into applying for jobs or starting their first job with an actual company, being a Salesforce administrator, is that they don't have any experience. So when they're applying for jobs, they feel like they're lacking, they don't have the confidence they need to dive right in. One of the best things you can do to bridge this gap is to do volunteer work. Today we're gonna to talk about a couple of the top volunteer companies that we recommend to get started with to do some Salesforce projects and get the experience you need to land your first job. All right, before we dive in, I just wanna point out that everything that we talk about today, the links are going to be in the description of the video. So if you want to jump right in and start searching for volunteer opportunities, uh, just scroll down to the description section, click on those links, and you'll be able to jump right in. Now, the first company we're gonna talk about today is the company we recommend the most, and that is Volunteer Match. So all you have to do is follow the link in the description and come to this panel over here on the side. And as you can see, I've already typed in Salesforce before. So just type it in here. And you're gonna see I have zero volunteer opportunities for Tampa. So all we have to do is come to this uh, filter here and click virtual opportunities, which is where all of the opportunities are going to be. Now, I do recommend not using any other filters. So uh, because sometimes the volunteer companies are the ones looking for volunteers, accidentally put information in that may filter them out uh, for certain things. So you can see we've got 52 matches. We should be able to sort through those and find what we're looking for. You can click in to some of these positions. Um, so this one, head of corporate engagement board member, this isn't very descriptive about why they're looking for this. And we don't really know what it has to do with Salesforce, uh, but I'm sure we could click into this and find out. However, for you guys to find something quickly, we're gonna just scroll through and try to find something that stands out to us. So right here, help with Salesforce configuration. Um, so a nonprofit company working with sexual violence, uh, looking for help with a Salesforce configuration. That could be a really great fit. Um, and if we scroll down, we'll see a, a few more. They need a Salesforce Apex developer. That may not be a beginner. Uh, position. So you want to scroll down a little bit more. And all you're doing is finding ones that seem to agree with exactly what you're looking to do. Remote Salesforce certified volunteer. So if you're one of these people who have just gotten your Salesforce certification and you're looking for next steps, this is you. So you just hop right in. And I think we found a couple other good matches on our way down. But you can see, uh, you can look over the job um, you know, work with volunteers, build automated reports, support email setup, replace their logo, install some social media. That all sounds like very basic stuff to get you started. And even if you don't know exactly how to do it, trust me, this is a very good environment to figure out how to do this stuff. Number one, you're working for free. Um, so they don't have super high expectations of what you're supposed to be capable of. So of course, do a good job, do your research, make sure you're doing good quality work when you're volunteering, because number one, this can go on your resume. These can be your recommendations, uh, but also you never know which of these volunteer opportunities might turn into downstream income and a long-term relationship with these individuals. The nonprofit uh, and volunteer networks are very tight knit, so it is not uncommon to work a volunteer project and for them to either A, pay you uh, for a secondary project, or B, to recommend you to other nonprofits who will happily pay you to do contract work on the side. So this is a great place to get started. So that's Volunteer Match. Now, the other one that we recommend is called Taproot. Again, the link is in the description. Now, Taproot is not nearly as uh, big as Volunteer Match, but again, you can search Salesforce, and you may have to come to Taproot on and off. You can see there's only two projects right now meeting that description. This one says Advanced Salesforce Development. This one says Salesforce Assistance. All you have to do is click into here. The same thing we were doing on Volunteer Match. You're looking through, making sure it's a good fit, and then uh, basically saying sign up to get started with Taproot or within Volunteer Match. You can just click the I want to help link. Of course, you're gonna have to sign in with a login and those kind of things. And this is a really great way to get comfortable with 
uh, interviews because these companies are still going to interview. They're not just going to let anyone come into their Salesforce system and start making changes. So this is a great way to practice those interviews, tell them what you're all about, but it's not as competitive an environment and you don't have to be as nervous about these interviews. So it's a really good place to go. Now, we've talked about Volunteer Match. We've talked about Taproot. Those are two really great places to get started with volunteering for Salesforce projects. Now, the next step is, again, link in the description. This is actually documentation from Salesforce helping you to do volunteer or pro bono work, as they call it. Now, this will walk you through how to plan volunteer uh, projects, um, how to you know, send pre-planning questions to the client to make sure you get you know, information. The reason for this is that you don't want to hop on an hour long call with a client and they don't really even know what they need. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not wasting your time sitting on call after call after call while you basically listen to them internally talk about the things that they need. You wanna help them figure that out before you're sitting on calls with them just to be more efficient with their time and your time. The second thing is scope. I would say this is the most important part of a volunteer project. They, you need to let the company know what it is that you're willing to complete as this volunteer project. You can't sit here and work for these companies for months and months and months unpaid, this is a way for you to give back and help them, for them to receive free help, but not to be their Salesforce administrator, you know, for an indefinite amount of time. Uh, so you have to put a scope around what this project is going to be. It has to be something that you're comfortable with and they're comfortable with. And again, it's very good. Uh, it's a very good way to get experience but you can't work for them indefinitely. So you have to define a scope. That might be, okay, we're gonna set up your, your lead, your account contact and opportunity records. We're gonna show you how to update those page layouts and add new fields. We're gonna show you how the conversion process works. And we're gonna show you how to close out opportunities. That's where the project ends though. And we can train you and get you up to speed. But anything after that, we can discuss a secondary project if we're both mutually agreed that this is a good situation. However, that's also a very good opportunity for you to say, hey guys, we just completed the scope of what we had agreed to work on. I would love to continue working for you guys. However, I'm going to have to start charging at least a nominal fee to make this not necessarily worth my time, but make it something that I'm willing to continue doing long-term and that you guys are comfortable with paying for me to do this long term. And obviously you can make it a great deal for a nonprofit and a really good way for you to start really building a resume and getting paid to do that on the side. So it depends on your skill level, but someone straight out of the gates working for a volunteer company, I would recommend somewhere in the ballpark of 20 to $50 an hour, depending on what you're looking for. And obviously that has a lot to do with uh, the client, what their budget is like and what they need. I highly recommend doing things that we call a managed services agreement where you don't dedicate to do all of these things, but you just say, hey, I'm available five hours a week, um, 20 hours a month when you need me. And that's the maximum I can do. That's the maximum I can be available. Um, and I'll do that for $25 an hour. So whatever makes sense to you, and then you can get paid sort of that, again, a nominal fee while you wait for, you know, the job to come through that you're looking for that's remote making six figures or whatever it is. You can wait for that job to come through while building your resume and getting experience. The last thing they're going to talk about um, is the actual build. And that's taking everything that you've scoped out, you've agreed on what you're going to do, and then actually building that out for the company that you're working with. So this is a ton of really good information um, to help guide you through actually doing a project for a volunteer opportunity. And again, a really good way to build your resume, a really good way to get experience, um, and a really good way to give back to the community. So I hope this was helpful. Um, make sure to click like in the video. Uh, this just helps it get in front of other people that might find this beneficial. And then, of course, if you want to see more content like this and you're finding our content valuable, make sure to subscribe and we'll get you uh, the notification on our weekly videos.